here in Florida, I have bobcats and alligators, coyotes. Need to protect my new service puppy in training. So I got this at Tractor Supply. They delivered it to me. I negotiated a military discount, 15% off by using employee ID. They may or may not do that for you. I wouldn't really push it too hard. They may be uncomfortable with that. Okay, so, um, oh, you can get your military discount on 4th of July or Veterans Day also. Now this is 10 feet long by 5 feet wide. It is customizable, but beware when you customize it, you may not be able to get uh, as easy of a exact fitting roof. The purpose of this video is I'm going to try to help you the best I can to save you a lot of time and agony and share what I learned about installing this. So let me go show you what tools you're going to need. Very helpful but not required. 17 millimeter socket for the main um, lock nuts. This, I don't know, man, I don't know what's the matter with people. Why we do such stupid things, but I have this socket that doesn't have the size on it, so it needs to be a deep socket. Can you make out what that is? How could we be so stupid, man, just to not put, whether it's millimeters or standard, and, oh gosh, 50 more videos on why do we have metric and standard? We need to switch to metric. We're so dumb. Okay, so... Uh, this to open up the packages, a uh, razor, and Phillips, which I hate Phillips. Phillips, uh, optional if you want to remove one of the side panels for connecting a dog door to another area or a dog house and a rubber or nylon mallet because these parts don't fit exactly and you're going to have to be banging in a lot of places to get things to fit. The whole thing is made in China so it's not precise. I do recommend go ahead and put the roof on because it'll reinforce the whole thing really well, pro uh, protect from rain, it'll last longer and uh, a little bit more predator protection. But a coyote still could, and a, no not coyote, a bobcat still could rip right through that material if it wanted to. So. I plan on maybe putting some chicken wire underneath. You know what, in the photos, in the installation photos, instructions are extremely bad. Uh, again, what in, what is the matter with people? What is so hard about providing excellent instructions? Um, okay, so... some <laughs> It's tricky. This whole thing is very tricky to install. Like I said, the instructions suck, no surprise. So if you're going to install it back up against something, don't do this. Have the, uh, have the nut on this side so you can tighten it. Um, when I installed it, I, I tightened that first before putting it up against the wall. But now if I want to kind of disassemble and relocate it, that's going to be difficult to access. So here you can see where I figured out. Go ahead and put the nut on the inside. In fact, you, I would probably recommend put the nut on the inside of all of this. The, uh, the idea of having it facing out is so it won't hurt if you hit that. But I think the ergonomics is good enough considering how short that is. Here you can see where I cut, not cut, but I removed the Phillips screws on four sides there to remove one panel because I'm going to put a dog door there. So the dog can come in and out of the lanai to come in here all protected, well, very well protected from predators. And as you can see, the you have to be you have to pay attention. This panel, the end panels, are going to be positioned like this. What that means is, uh, so when I'm looking that way. This is further away. You don't want it up here. Okay, so some more tricks and tips. 
these can slide up and down so don't worry about too much position of where you put those you want to uh, just hand tighten these before you use the impact wrench to or wrench to tighten those up um, what else pay attention to when you're assembling it pay attention to see if there's any places a, a dog or predator can get in and out of this so this one's pretty pretty good I've been shopping for one that's taller than this this one's six foot high up to here beware other kennels are advertised as six feet but they're talking about up here six feet from the ground to here so in my case it's really about uh, seven close to eight feet to the apex so that's misleading marketing checking to make sure my there she is uh, so this one the roof is optional at tractor supply and it is a canvas with some kind of a poly a uh, plastic type material underneath it so it looks like good quality it's not real thick the straps are not really super high quality I'm going to estimate that roof is going to last about maybe seven years at the most something like that before the fabric is getting really bad here in the Florida Sun and uh, the thing is once you get the roof um, the metal here is probably going to last a very long time. If you see any scrapes or rust spots, go ahead and get that touched up. You might want to go ahead and spray all these exposed metal parts with some kind of a rust protector or primer. It may not look as nice but at, at initially, but it will keep it um, in a newer condition much longer. What these holes are, I don't quite know yet. So watch out for that trip bar on the bottom. Since I'm over six feet tall, I'm thinking about uh, cutting in the middle here. Cut that in half and then pound each side of this bar upwards on the inside. And, uh, and then once I do that, um, so it'll be kind of angled up on one side there and one side there and it's either weld or put some kind of cross brace reinforcement there so when I walk in and out it'll be clear um, and then I'll kind of use a tie this where it's up a little higher so I won't hit my head as easily the footer I'll probably leave there um probably won't not going to trip over it in my case the door was installed uh, backwards which but it still works fine and that's because i wanted the door on this side instead of if i flip this panel over then the door would be on that side but i wanted it on this side so that's personal preference and what else yeah, this thing's quite a bear to put together. Uh, it's recommended to have two people, especially for the roof, because uh, it's not so much that it's heavy. It's just that when you put the, you, you assemble the roof on the ground, and that's where you're going to use the mallet the most. When you assemble it on the ground, um, you need ideally two people to lift it up, because once you place it up on top, there's nothing for it to set on top of meaning uh, it just slides right off there's nothing holding it on so it was extremely frustrating to do it solo by myself because i had to attach these once i get a couple of these attached on here then i was able to realign it but it didn't fit quite right so i had to use a rubber mallet and really pound it hard to get it all nice and centered the way i could tell if it's if the roof is centered really well is Looking at the middle here, if this middle 
crossbar lines up in the middle there, then I consider that centered. Same thing here, so that's not perfect, but um, that's just going to have to do. <laughs> uh, the roof comes with two different types of straps. It comes with these, and then it comes with Velcro. Um, so Velcro is the only option on the end pieces. The roof is actually pretty easy to assemble, but to put it on top and to line it up is difficult. So easy to assemble it when it's on the ground, I mean, with a, as long as you have a mallet. And then one of the last steps before you put the tarp on is to put these turnbuckle things on there. The instructions are terrible. I can't, it's really hard to tell how it's supposed to go based on the, the uh, paper. But so something like this, and that's where that deep socket comes in really handy because you can really tighten those up really well. If you try to do that by hand times four, because there's four ends, that's going to take you a long time. So when I figure out the size of the socket, I'll put it in the description as soon as I can. What other kind of tips? Uh, the quality seems to be um, okay, <laughs> but See how it's already rusting in there so I'm probably gonna spray a lot of silicone all over this place some kind of like a dry rust protector of some sort but yeah I'm glad I got the roof because now I know this thing is super reinforced and let me know what you recommend to keep bobcats from coming in this fabric so far, I think maybe uh, chicken wire, somehow attach it to the here and have it come up here and then over here somehow, I'm not sure how zip ties, or, no, not zip ties, but um, some kind of a um, wire, but not this thick. So yeah, my service puppy's going to be quite spoiled all this room to play outside in protection from the rain and everything from the sun and she can just enjoy the outdoors she'll probably pick a spot over the course of several months where she's going to be pooping the most and so what i do about that is use the plastic bags to clean it up and then i have a hose nearby after i scoop the poop up I need to remember where it was and then hose it down really good. This is artificial grass. So this type of a kennel would work best over artificial grass. I highly recommend that because if you don't have artificial grass, having this roof on top is going to kill the grass if there is any. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it won't kill the grass because the sun can still come in at an angle to get it some... You know to come in here and mow it that doesn't look very practical to do that at all because then you have to weed eat on the sides so I know artificial grass is difficult to install it is expensive but where did my puppy go um, <laughs> oh she's over there so the artificial grass definitely super awesome i love it but for a piece this big is pretty expensive i think this was around 1500 um excluding any labor or materials so just for the roll of grass itself and i manhandled it all on my own which was pretty difficult hey you spoiled baby you got a dog door in there. Come on. So I'm going to end up blocking that dog door. I'm not going to remove it because I don't want to hold there. Because I don't want her coming in and out here where a bobcat can jump that three foot fence. And so I'm going to put in a similar dog door right over there where I removed the one panel. There is another panel on the on here right here you can see 
the little nuts and then Phillips on the other side. You could actually remove that panel. So it comes with two of those. Hey girl. Here's the toy. Okay, so let's see what else. I don't see any need to stake this thing down. I think it's heavy enough. Even if a Cat 2 hurricane comes through here, or it probably won't do anything. I think a Cat Category 3 or 4 will actually lift this thing up so that tarp is going to have to come off if there's a hurricane that big. Or I'll have to, uh, here in Florida, I probably should go ahead and stake it down somehow. I mean, but it's, it's really hard. Um, well, that'd have to be some kind of hurricane, but um, I guess it's possible the updraft could lift this thing up when I have the roof on a hurricane, I, I guess, could lift it up. I could kind of easily hurricane-proof it by just getting some metal strap to connect to my existing wrought iron fence, and it should stay in place pretty well. And maybe put one post on that side. Oh, she's still learning, only 11 weeks old, and doesn't know not to put her foot underneath my foot yet, or else she gets stepped on. So that's why I'm wearing some really soft sandals for now. Don't want to wear hard shoes when you have a new puppy because you could really injure. There is a trick to fastening these straps. Uh, so this one I didn't do right. I'm going to redo this one. So here I'll demo how this works. Undo this one. So the way I recommend is get the strap coming behind these two bars down here because the strap is pretty long. Then you come up through here and then down through there and then pull tight. Not extremely tight. This is made in China and this is not, this is plastic and um, so yeah, just a little tight. <laughs> I see this a uh, little bit of paint damage here. I'm going to need to put primer on there and paint that or that's just going to rust through over a few years. I know I'm jumping around but um, you see these, uh, this roof, how easy it is to install is because it has these push pins kind of like um, hiking stick. What was that sound? I want to make sure there's not a predator out here. Because she can't. Oh, she went through the dog door. Scared me because I'm not familiar with that sound. Okay, she's learning the dog door, which is kind of good and bad. Uh, that one. So these you push in and everything fits pretty well. She's trying to tear up the artificial grass in a spot that I'm going to have to probably reinforce with some peg pins or something. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I have to provide her some more chew toys out here. All right. So I, uh, I know this is a little bit of scatterbrain thing, but I don't do dog kennels every day. This is the first one I've ever done. And the time it took me, probably about four or five hours uh, solo. Like I said, I just wanted to um, get this video done before I forget all of the little strange tricks that I learned when I put this together. I have to make sure I remember to close the door when I'm done cleaning the inside. Otherwise, I'm defeating the whole purpose of having a dog door there for her to come in here. If she can just come right out here or a predator can come right in. So this lock actually opens and closes extremely well. I've had no problems with it. Um, I'm surprised during the whole process this always worked really well. No matter how much I moved everything around. It's just, uh, oh, you know why? Because the door 
is not dependent on another panel for alignment. See how the frame right there, the door lock is on an entire panel. So no matter what I do with the other panels, the door lock will always be perfectly aligned. So that's a very good design right there. As far as exactly where to put these, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Just about a foot from the top and about a foot from the bottom. Don't stress over it too much. Um, but when, you, when it comes to the roof, there is an issue with the straps in a few places. Um, so here you can see this should be either here or here. So I put it in the worst possible location there. You can see more scratches where I've been moving stuff around using the rubber mallet to do that. And uh, for some reason here it didn't it didn't become an issue, but it did become an issue here with this one Velcro strap. So um, something they could have done better is to have markers where is the perfect place to put these. That would have been thoughtful and considerate of them, but there are none. And the instructions are really bad. Another good design is it does have lock nuts. You see that nylon blue there? So this is not going to come loose. That's very good. What are you doing? Taking a nap on a water hose? All right, so I think that's enough. Um, yep, so I hope that's been really helpful. If it is, you know what to do down below. Thanks.